On this super review, let's take a look at the Al Glamour RT3. So what we've got here is another in-ear monitor from the company Al Glamour, and I have previously reviewed a product by this company, but it was a budget model. It was around a $30 IEM. Here with the RT3, we're talking about $120. And what that $120 gets you is a dual driver, three driver, kind of depending on how you count it. It's a hybrid IEM. It's got a dynamic driver for the base, for the low end, but then it's also packing a dual balanced armature driver by Knowles, which I'm kind of, I'm kind of excited about that. You know, Knowles is pretty well known for making pretty nice balanced armature drivers for IEMs and well, Al Glamour's got it here. The other thing that the Al Glamour RT3 has kind of got going for it, at least, you know, for, for people who are into it, is a really unique look. And you'll, you're gonna see when we open this thing up, but it's got kind of like a, a color, color paint splashiness. And what's really interesting about it is that they say that the patterns are completely random. And what that suggests to me is that the, the RT3 that I've got here in this box is gonna be unlike any other RT3 out there, including yours. Yours is different too, but does that really matter? I don't know. Let's go ahead and open up the box. We'll find out what we get inside with the Al Glamour RT3, and then I'll spend some time living with this IEM and comparing it to some other $100, $130 IEMs to see how it stacks up. All right, so I've been listening to the Al Glamour RT3 for a bit now and comparing these things to some other earphones in this price range, so like around $100 to $150. And I'm ready to let you know what I think about this thing. And like I typically do, I'm gonna start by talking about the build of the RT3. And now this is where I think this earphone is either gonna be the sort of thing that you think is really cool looking or you don't, I don't know, maybe you don't really care that much. I personally fall into the camp that I think it looks pretty attractive and I appreciate that they've done something different, but it's not necessarily the look I would go for. I don't find it offensive. I don't think that that's a problem. I don't think the aesthetic is a problem. I'm just kind of pointing out that I think that 
some people that are gonna be interested in this earphone are gonna be interested in it because of the way it looks. And I don't happen to be one of those people. I mean, I think, again, I think it's attractive. It's just not my cup of tea. But for those of you that do like this look, I think that it's pretty well done. Uh, I appreciate the Owl Glamour has, uh, I guess, however they've done this, ostensibly, according to what they say, all the patterns are unique. And in fact, I can look between my two buds and they look different. Like the, the color splashiness looks different. The, um, the color itself is actually maybe a little bit duller than you might expect it is. You know, the shells are completely aluminum, kind of like an anodized aluminum, and they've got that sheen to them like you, you expect with other anodized aluminum. But the color is just not super vibrant, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Again, just to, just to be clear, I'm just kind of explaining it so that if you're looking at this thing in pictures and you're wondering how it looks in real life, the color is maybe a little bit understated, but I think classy. Uh, I did talk about the those buds being made out of an aluminum and they are just completely front to back made out of aluminum. It does look like they are two pieces. So there is sort of a, a front panel and then the back cavity. Uh, you can see where those two pieces join. Um, what else can I say about the, the build of the buds? I mean, the fit, I didn't find the fit very, it wasn't bad. Uh, but the fit for me is not great. I think that the these buds just fit a little bit shallow in my ears. And because of that, they're not super secure. And isolation is a little bit weaker here than I would say with your average I am. It's not bad. I wouldn't say the isolation is terrible here. Um, but if you're looking for an earphone that specifically isolates well, it's not going to be the RT3. Um, the bigger problem that I had with the fit more so than the, the shape of the buds is actually with this cable. And now, all right, I'll start, I'll start by talking about the things I like about this cable, which is it's a pretty handsome little cable. Kind of reminds me of the cable that came with the Wizard Kylan, which I reviewed. No, oh, it's been a while. Uh, this cable seems very similar to that. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's, I don't know, basically the same OEM, but, um, yeah, just I think build wise, it's a nice looking cable. It's got sort of a, uh, a copper and silver color intertwined. It's a nice look. The, the bigger problem that I have with it though, however, is these ear hooks. And this is kind of an issue I have with, I don't want to say a lot of earphones, like, but some earphones that have pretty aggressive ear hooks like these, I have issues fitting these things into my ears. And maybe that's a me thing. Maybe that's a common thing, but uh, basically what it means is that when I've got these things in my ear, the hook is a little bit too aggressive and it wants to curve back before it's reached over the top of my ear, if that makes sense. I mean, I'll show you how it fits me and maybe that'll make a little bit more sense, but that is one issue that I had with this cable. And just for clarification or for full disclosure, while reviewing this earphone, because that fit was an issue for me, I actually primarily used these on an aftermarket cable that didn't have that issue. Now, in terms of sound with the Al Glamour RT3, on the plus side, I'm gonna say that these things don't really do anything bad. Like there's no glaring faults in them. Uh, but I would say that the, the general sound character, it's not necessarily my cup of tea. So the general sound I would describe is kind of it's a little bit of a warm sound, which is to say that, you know, it's got some nice bass emphasis. The lower, the lower mid range is maybe a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say it's forward of the upper mid range, but that, that contrast doesn't quite exist there where it does with some other IEMs that have maybe a little bit more of a clarity sort of lean to them. So uh, a little bit of a warm character to it. And I think what else sort of defines the sound of the RT3, at least for me, is that it's got kind of a, a dryness to the sound, um, sort of a clinical precision to it, which can sound good, right? Um, but it does have just a little bit of a dryness. And I don't, I don't know if it's like, I think that dryness does prevent the RT3 from sounding muddy, uh, which I don't know, you don't get it in every sort of earphone that I would describe as a warm sound, but a warm sound with like a, a thick lower mid range can tend to sound a little bit muddy and you don't get that here with the RT3. And I chalk that up to just sort of the dryness of the, the, the sound presentation. Um, unfortunately, I would say a downside of that dryness, or again, this is just kind of my impressions of it, is that the head stage on this is pretty narrow. This feels like it's a, a pretty much in your head sound. And 
that's more or less true with a lot of IEMs, but I think that it is especially true here with the RT3. Um, I think treble on this is, it's not especially like laid back or anything like that, but it's also not especially forward. I didn't have any issues with sibilance. The treble, you know, kind of like the rest of the mid range is not a lot of emphasis, um, but it's pretty dry and precise and clinical. Uh, just not a ton of character to it for my tastes. For some direct comparisons, I did listen to the RT3 uh, right against the Eco OH-1. Not the OH-10, that's a little bit more expensive, but the OH-1, which is, I don't know, kind of in this similar price range. And I would say that the, the biggest differences between these two earphones is that, at least in my opinion, the OH-1 tonality is a little bit stronger, um, a little bit more natural sounding. There's more emphasis in the upper mid-range less emphasis in the lower mid-range on the OH-1. And that to me gives a stronger sense of clarity in the sound. Again, not that these sound muddy, they don't sound muddy, uh, but that warm character and that, that sort of warm dryness to it, it, it doesn't feel like a very forward sounding earphone. It's fairly relaxing, I suppose you could say, uh, but just not very forward. Uh, soundstage, I would also give an edge to the OH-1. Not that they have a, a massive sound stage or anything, but again, I think that the uh, the Al Glamers here, they're a little bit behind uh, in that category. Whether or not that's important to you, up to you. But in my opinion, the OH-1 does better on sound stage. Uh, in terms of bass, I would say that, hmm, they both have fairly similar bass emphasis, which is to say they do have, you know, north of neutral bass. In fact, I would say that the, the bass character on the RT3 is actually pretty strong. Uh, again, it's not muddy, um, but it's not like a, it's not an overwhelming bass. If you want to get overwhelming bass, well, let's bring, that brings us to our next comparison, which is the TFZ number three. Uh, the TFZ number three versus this, obviously the, the TFZ has more sub bass emphasis. I think that the TFZ has also got a little bit less lower mid range and more upper mid range, kind of like the Eco. Uh, so it creates a stronger sense of clarity. Although I think that tonality wise, these things, the RT3s are a little bit more natural than the TFZs. That's actually one of the issues that I've got with the TFZ number three is the tonality is just a little, a little meh. Um, but the soundstage on the TFZ number three, definitely. I mean, the soundstage on those, I think is one of the strongest sound stages I've heard on an IEM. And well, up against the RT3, which is a little bit, a little bit lacking that category. I would say, of course, the TFZ number three uh, beats these in soundstage for what that's worth. So out of five stars, I'm gonna give the Al Glamour RT3 three stars. I don't think they're bad, but they just don't do a ton for me personally. Again, I think a lot of the appeal of this earphone is gonna be this aesthetic. And if you're into this aesthetic and you wanna know, is this a good earphone to have? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a fine earphone. It's not my cup of tea, but I don't think you're gonna find it offensive in the least. The fit issues, eh, maybe those are my ears, but you might also wanna consider that you might need to get a new two pin cable for these things. Um, if your ears are shaped roughly like this, is that what your ears look like? I don't know. And then the sound character, again, just kind of like a, a warm, dry, a little bit of an in your head sound, but it is clinical and pretty clean. Just not my cup of tea. If you're interested in checking out the Al Glamour RT3, of course, I've got links in that description down below. And while you're down there, you can hit the like button for the video if you liked it. You can subscribe to the channel, and then I'll see you on the next super review.